implantable electronic device infections, my EDD, eyes, too much for me, so I'm just going to find devices. Uh, that was also uh, recently published in 2010 in circulation and was really just to put in the bank pocket if you're living with all the very details. Basically, the American Heart 2010 recommendations for anti microbial prophylaxis for invasive procedure in patients with uh, class 3, basically, it amounts to, uh, within IE for devices, it's class 3, which means you shouldn't do it with really. it. Uh, and the reason is that the predominance of staph is pathogens in device infections, uh, rather than the kind of things you get out of the oral flora, uh, suggests that antibiotic prophylaxis for dental procedures is a little, little and more benign. In the rare event of a device infection due to an oral pathogen, it's most likely to have arisen from bacteria and from daily events such as toothbrush and chewing food. And therefore, there's uh, currently no scientific uh, basis for the use of prophylactic antibiotics for routine invasive dental GI or GU procedures to prevent device infection. This is a real change from previous uh, recommendations. Um, I think many, can I ask for maybe a show of hands, how many people think that they actually do give an antibiotic for patients who have a little of this or a little of that? No, I guess everybody's in compliance with the government. So I can tell you in New York we're not in compliance with the government. The ESC, which has an excellent set of guidelines, which usually parallel the American Heart, American College, and are often published together, very, very similar uh, guidelines. This is from 2009. And uh, we again look at the issue of purple access. They also, uh, in this case, don't recommend that except in high risk patients. And notice again the uh, level of evidence here is fairly uh, low. It's class C or whatever class. Uh, 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 a level of, uh, of evidence means you've done randomized trials, several randomized trials that have shown benefit, uh, and then you go down from there. So this is all experts sitting around and proverbial about that smoke even uh, coming to uh, some recommendations. So the summary of prophylaxis is there's no need for it for most device patients. It is indicated in this body disease or HICM. Uh, you can define value of the disease, I guess, to your own satisfaction. Uh, concerns about the emergence of resistant organisms, anaphylaxis, cost, and lack of good evidence is the reason uh, why antibiotics are not really uh, looking at There's no evidence really it's bad, there's just no evidence that it's good, and therefore it's not evidence-based, and therefore it's up. Uh, the undercurrent, of course, is my patients take me not to say many times, so I'm not a good course. Um, preparation of the patient. Um, uh, this one didn't quite, quite fit on the screen, but what's circled at the top actually is the date of this, which is 1988, in which they found that basically hippocrines or showers, uh, with the hexagon showers, prior to a, a procedure reduces uh, uh, immune infections. There's another one from the Lancet here in 1991, which also showed in the perspective of the trial that uh, hippocrine showers uh, were better, oh, I'm sorry, wiping the skin with hippocrine shower, uh, hippocrine or hexagon is better than using beta dome in the public and the uh, uh, So that goes back to 1991. Uh, what really uh, turned tables was an article in the New England Journal. And many years later, 2010, in which uh, again, uh, for hexidine versus uh, for iodine for surgical site and sepsis show that for uh, hexidine is better. So most laboratories have been changed over from beta to for hexidine rights. Um, sometimes infections are obvious, and uh, sometimes they're not. Uh, the ESC gives uh, very nice guidelines in their uh, 2009 publication, uh, basically simplifying the uh, idea of how to make the diagnosis, which is blood cultures. They like to have two or three, preferably, uh, me, echo and physical signs. And the treatment is basically for devices, take everything out, and four to six weeks of antibiotic therapy, depending on the type of treatment, is isolated. The uh, OHA ACC guidelines are 
I was supposed to see, they're a little more complicated, but basically the message is the same. Take everything out uh, and uh, live antibiotics, uh, commercial antibiotics. Uh, this is the, uh, the European uh, guidelines again. I'm going to not go over those in great detail because it's, for this one it's four weeks, for this one it's two weeks, if there's this but not that. And I think that's a little bit much for a broad-ranging topic, but we should know that the information is there. Now, there's a nice um, article in the New England Journal from 2004, treatment of infections associated with uh, surgical implants, not necessarily uh, always uh, uh, devices or kind of devices, but sometimes. Uh, and this is also interesting. Under treatment and over treatment of patients with infected injury with implantable devices from the uh, University of Minnesota. Uh, this was interesting because they randomized patients into several different uh, uh, categories to find out what happened. And what they found was that any attempt at salvaging of the device with uh, taking the device out, uh, uh, lavaging the pocket, keeping them on antibiotics, packing the pocket, putting them on antibiotics for weeks and weeks and weeks, putting them in a different level, not on these things. Basically, all those things don't work so often that you really just shouldn't do it. Um, the best uh, treatment was immediately removal of the entire unit, followed by two weeks of intravenous antibiotics, an implantation of a new system, and two and more days of uh, uh, post-operative antibiotics. So um, there is no advantage to removing the full system waiting for six weeks of antibiotics, which was part of the study, then uh, waiting for them, and then going on for another six weeks of um, intravenous antibiotics. Uh, there was an error that I can remember when our IV people did want us to give people six weeks of antibiotics uh, after the removal of the system. Uh, and didn't like us putting a new one until if not six weeks, at least many weeks of antibiotics beforehand. So things had come down in the new study uh, from about a decade ago was the first to show that uh, you do need to take everything out, but maybe you don't need to spend weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks uh, before moving on to the next step. So here's the um, American Heart Association uh, scientific uh, uh, statement from 2010. On uh, device uh, infections and management. And there is a new uh, article that just came out. It's the August issue of the Food and Clinical, Food and Clinical Medical Union. The authors come from the Mayo Clinic. And basically, uh, they are the authors of the, uh, or many authors of the AHA ACC uh, article as well. So it's a nice, condensed, but uh, easy to read from. That's available online, it's a free journal, uh, so it's, uh, it's absolutely current and it's a good uh, summary. Uh, essentially, uh, it goes through the algorithm and we're going to try not to be too detailed about it, but if you suspect a device uh, infection, go about ordering a number of studies, uh, decide the, uh, whether you should give empirical or antibiotic therapy. That's always one of the issues, of course, is uh, a doctor hopes to salvage things, the patient has a little room, a problem, or they've had some chills or something else, uh, and they uh, start the patient in the critical antibiotics and then without really having cultures, and that's what we all read because we know them, that they need to be an infected device without positive cultures, which makes things more difficult. Um, uh, when they say in this algorithm to, uh, that if the patient has systemic signs or symptoms, to start empiric antibiotic therapy, that's after going the blood cultures, that's up here, and then after that, we'll uh, go ahead and remove the start um, antibiotics right away because the patient's having symptoms. Uh, if the inflammatory changes at the pocket site, um, we're planning to take out the device more or less right away. We don't need to give antibiotics to start with. Um, but if you're uh, planning to wait for a while or if there is uh, uh, to determine the duration therapy and then complex algorithms, which you can see here and you can read at your leisure, but I don't think we'll uh, really be happy with reading that. Four to six weeks, two to four weeks, two to four weeks. Uh, 
uh, two weeks, uh, seven to ten days, uh, uh, if you're just uh, taking a generator out of an infected pocket as um, taking the leaves out and uh, the, uh, that's what you need after um, doing that. So there's a lot, it, it gets a little complicated, but it's um, laid out there in black and white, so if you want to refer to it, uh, you can do it pretty easily. Uh, when you implant the new device after taking the old one out, once again, uh, there's a uh, there's a nice algorithm, which I'm not going to go through all the names on, but you can see that it's pretty clearly delineated for everybody. Uh, basically, the uh, tendency in recent years is not to wait for weeks and weeks of antibiotics, but to wait for a period of time when you've uh, taken out the old one, the patient's been on antibiotics for a while, and then has uh, no cultures uh, for uh, a variety of uh, well-done things. I mean, it's usually 72 hours, can be a little bit more. Uh, another issue uh, besides the, uh, the skin washing before the procedure issue, and the issue of whether it helps to take a little time shower the night before with a couple, uh, and I should have mentioned, by the way, that people who took showers twice the day before a procedure. I did better than patients who took a shower just the night before the procedure once. Uh, so there's all sorts of uh, information that would suggest that the failure to of put it in showers is a good idea. Uh, we've been found to be a few people who have a chronic uh, a staph in their nasal passages, and using some bacterial ointment seems to uh, reduce that. The patients often are breathing on themselves while you're fucking and breaking them, so you may have them uh, nicely skin prepped. But uh, if they happen to turn towards the person who's uh, breaking them and say, oh, well, I'm not done from whatever um, uh, you end up with in the staff. And this just shows that uh, infections can be reduced by using um, bacterial treatment. Another uh, issue is uh, those, uh, those uh, green armpits that some people have. Uh, what is the role of free axillary to increase micro infections? Um, and most people who get kept in gait uh, are not asked to raise their arms above their head while they uh, 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 touch their armpits as well, they actually. But uh, this uh, study suggested uh, circulation suggested maybe that would be actually a good idea. Uh, but uh, I must say this is something we don't do. And as I sort of reviewed this material in preparation for this, uh, I said, hmm, maybe we should, um, maybe we should do that. And any infection, of course, is a calamity with a device, and anything we can do to reduce such infections is excellent. Um, antibiotic prophylaxis for putting the case paper in the plantation, uh, a meta analysis is the meaning when this goes back to the 1990s, and for a long time that it's a good idea. Uh, nevertheless, there were some old time planters who said, well, my, uh, my risk of infection is so low, or it's uh, just no, no point in giving antibiotics. And then you have that same issue that you had with the dental prophylaxis, which is it adds cost, it adds the possibility of anaphylactic reactions, it adds uh, to the risk of resistant organisms. So, so as long as I have a near zero uh, in, uh, infection rate, I'm not going to give antibiotics. And that was a, a major contention. Um, uh, which has gradually moved away over the last decade. Um, this is again uh, Dr. Uh, Zahir uh, from uh, American Medical one of the leading writers on the topic of infected uh, devices. Uh, this is another article from a couple of uh, years ago. And again, I should have put this in bank with the other ones. It's more um, algorithms on how you predict it and deal with it. Clinical predictors of device infections. How do you know who is most likely to get one? Uh, this is a paper from uh, last year. Uh, so this year, you uh, we'll look at uh, a variety of things that you can go to an algorithm for that gives you an idea of uh, how likely they are to be infected. I'm sorry, how uh, likely they are to um, have an infection. And what are the things uh, that predict whether they're going to get them. And it's all the things that you might expect. Uh, if you have uh, immune deficiency or steroid therapy or you're on dialysis, 
or you've had infections in the past, certainly if you have a fever in the legs, whatever, all those things, I don't think you know what you really have with the infected device. If you have that patient again who is not sure if the uh, material on the lead that you see is an echo or is just a little thrombus or something, and they're just not feeling up to par, but they're not having shaking chills, uh, they give a little algorithm for uh, looking at combining all those factors that we saw in the previous slide. And if you add them all up as you add them, then the list of uh, indeed um, uh, making it a very thin diagnosis becomes more. <coughs> um, <coughs> device infections and in my, my, excuse me, um, audio visual, can you tap in a little bit? My screen here just went out, is there, is there a way to make that go on? <laughs> Okay. Um, you know, I could, um, I mean, it's sort of hard to see on this angle, but uh, maybe I could just have a loudspeaker and uh, move off to the side so I can see the screen. Do we have a one with people in the screen? Okay. Well, I'll sort of stand off to the side. My my nursing staff is always telling me that if I get within ten feet of a computer, it breaks. Uh, and uh, here we go again. Um, what about the 
or etc. Is it is it really a failure? Is it the lead's fault or the inventor's? Can the problem be salvaged one invasively? And can be solved one way invasively? For example, by changing the device rather than by changing the thing. So, uh, one of the things is remember the famous uh, subterranean flush uh, problem. I'll show you some pictures. That's this one. Careful about the sutures, you want to be tight enough, but not too tight. Remember the lead is on the sphere, and if you take it gently, uh, too much slack can actually result in a lead on the this as the heart uh, beats and can actually uh, promote the uh, operation of the lead because the lead here in the key lab is going to be next to the lead. So we'll check the control. The lead installation of the key can have a junction from the weak point. And we do a cluster and we're request it. It's easy to uh, to cause some fatigue that trying to bring it to an early generation. Um, replace study with the uh, various complications with uh, device replacements, and I have to that to you for my references. Subclavian crush, I'm going to show some pictures. Uh, Subclavian approach to impacts as a set of pen up to the stone is most. Does not result in subclavian crush, but it requires a different scale of fixed on the way for the people who oppose it. The so called accelerator technique has been becoming more popular now because of the words that subclavian crush are problem. The problem is that there's a lot of very tough material between a chronicle and the event page. If you start to think of it, who knows if they're fixed? Your shoulder is just connected and your rib cage are tough material between your chronicle and your ribs. Nothing will just, otherwise your arm and might just fall. So there's a tough material in there. And when you put a lead to it and you wind it at the moment of fix, you will have a higher incidence of in this crush problem. Picture of it. In this case, the tension uh, on the stick anchoring stand was not high paper enough. The lead is kind of the same here as pull back when you cut both the trickle edge and the anchor edge. Two loose is in the credit. Here's a man 22 who had a cardiac arrest, got an ICD, came back, and was very severely injured. But uh, an ECG showed no capture. And you can see what's happened here, perhaps. This is so called Twitter syndrome. Uh, by turning the device over and over and over, basically, you pull the thing way out of the heart. So it's almost been the system. Another picture of it. Well, it's not a bad thing. Too tight for literature, such as the record of This is one that's not the virus fault. This is the famous factory fix aid in which the spring of metal that makes it J, preform J, came out of the insulation and several people died because of that. Uh, there are hundreds of thousands of people who still have this in the face. And uh, if you find a patient who has a empty fixed lead, uh, you need to be watch. Taking them up prophylactically seems to be a bad idea. Um, this was a lead that was put in nicely, but ended up, as you may be able to see on this uh, CT, that it's almost going to the chest fall. Came into the seven millimeters of just poking right through. The patient was asymptomatic. Um, but uh, the integrated signal shows zero amplitude. Uh, be careful of these. I want to change the pulse generator to, uh, to look at the lead. If the lead doesn't come out of the socket easily, don't pull hard or make the patient damage the lead. So there are different ways to get that lead out. Um, people have recommended just chopping the header off there with a long cutter. That actually looks very nice, but most people don't have one on the back. Uh, drilling out, whoops. Drilling out the back of the thing, uh, and then pushing the lead out of the edge. Uh, Here's one where the header was chopped off, and you just push the lead out. It's actually very, very simple to take a quick set. Uh, the 
those devices that do not have stops or have hex stops, uh, the uh, same GVEX that is true, but it's basically choosing to put it into the, uh, you take out the hex stops, that's the set screws, and then you jam that into the pen and you sort of pry it up. It almost always works to see the effect of the electronic This is a